Hi, my name is Danny uh, from Free Speech TV. I'll be your host today. Um, I'm doing an interview. Uh, what's it like being a teacher? And um, our guest today, her name is uh, Essence. Um, and you can tell them your name. Hi, I'm Essence Andino, and I'm a kindergarten teacher. So this year is my first year. Okay, and um, uh, you can tell us uh, like your age and uh. Mm -hmm. And like, where do you teach? Like what state? So I am currently teaching in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the age range is like five and six year olds. We don't really see, you know, kids older than six. Um, but yeah, this is my first year teaching in Pittsburgh and I love it. It's a lot of fun. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what made you want to be a teacher? Um, so, when I was in college, I actually, um, so what made me want to be a teacher was my experience that I had in college with work um, had to do with like a lot of teaching. Uh, my major that I originally like was pursuing was psychology. Um, and, you know, I went the four years, um, almost the whole four years uh, or five, I should say, because I graduated in five. But um went almost all those years with, um, you know, doing the psychology degree, but I wanted to change my, you know, my mind and go into elementary education. So I ended up doing it just because um, psychology and elementary education, they're like the classes are, I wouldn't say the same, but a lot of the requirements are tied together. So um, that's what I did. And then I graduated with a children's literature certificate so going into that, I started student teaching um, and, you know, I wasn't too sure at that moment yet, but, you know, after, you know, having the experience, I learned, like, I really loved it. It's something that I, like, to this day, I'm very passionate about. So it's kind of something that I, I learned to love through my experience and, you know, it wasn't something I woke up one day and just, you know, said, hey, I want to be a teacher. I, you know, I definitely had to go through the experiences. There's rough patches, of course, but I learned that even like with all the the challenges that I had to go through, it's something that like I'll always love. And, you know, even with the rough patches, it taught me to love it even more. So I kept pursuing it. And then here I am. Oh, that, that's good. Good good to hear that. Um, Yeah. Uh, I always say that um, experience is the best teacher. So you want to get good at something, get some experience. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so what what motivates you to teach? Like, what, like what what's so special about it that, that keeps you going? Um, uh, what I'd say motivates me the most probably um. Probably the fact that um, the age, like the age group that I'm teaching right now is um, they're at such a sensitive age. And I, what motivates me is that they're, they're like the future of our world. And um, I want to continue to be an influence on that age group because five and six year olds, their minds are like sponges every that is like the most vital age to learn anything, it, it, you know, anything, languages, uh, subjects. So um, what motivates me is probably the fact that they're our future. And, you know, I want to be able to have an impact on that. And each day I just, you know, try my best to make a difference in each of their lives because, you know, they're all my favorites. My whole, my whole class, every child is my favorite. So I want to, um, you know, show each child that they're cared for and that, you know, someone is looking out for them. So I tried to be that person for all of them. Good, good, good. That, it sounds like you're in it for, the, uh, for a good reason. Mm -hmm. um, when you first uh, taught class, was you, like, nervous? Were you scared? Like when I first started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. I definitely was a little scared just because um, 
I, you know, wasn't sure what the kids would think of me. I wasn't sure if they'd like, um, you know, if we'd get along. I didn't, you know, I didn't want the kids to be like scared or nervous. And that was, that was actually one of the obstacles I had in the beginning. Um, you know, it's hard disciplining them. They need it, but it, it's definitely hard. Um, they're, cause they're so young, but, um, yeah, I would say it, I was definitely nervous at first, but after like the first maybe two or three days, I was like extremely comfortable. So it didn't take long to get out of that nervous stage because the kids, they warm up to you a lot faster than you might think they would. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, most kids are more friendly than adults. So yeah. 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 Uh, and like what subject you said you teach? You said you teach like five and six year olds. So um Yeah, so in my class, um we I teach all subjects such as math, English, social studies, science. Okay. So we learn a little bit of all of those throughout the year. And we have the curriculum that we have to follow, but those are the four subjects. Okay. Four okay. subjects, okay. yeah. So um like what type of teaching style do you do? Do you like uh, read off PowerPoints? Um, do you ask a lot of questions? Like, um, so I um, I do like use PowerPoints. I use a lot of um, like online technology. Um, Class Dojo is something I used a lot during the year. Uh, that wasn't really any like teaching curriculum that was more so to keep track of their behavior and how their performance is in the class um I you know I tried to limit the board you like the the smart board use because I didn't want them to be 100% like you know though this is the only way I learn and oh, okay, that, exactly. you know I didn't want them to think that you know that was the only way to learn so I would say um I, let me think, my brain is kind of like fuzzing out a little bit, but um, I did use a lot of the PowerPoints through the year. Um, I would kind of conversate with the kids a lot. So um, I know they're, they're really young, so it's important to keep their, con their attention and like, you know, jump around every so often to keep their attention. You never want to keep them sitting. So I conversated with them a lot about the subject. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, I didn't want to be that person that stood in front of the class, in front of like young children, you know, just talking and talking because they're going to eventually get bored. So I tried to make it silly, um, yeah. conversate with them, use a lot of images and a lot of music. Oh, yeah. So, That's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cause with music, um, if it has like a nice beat and a good hook, you can learn anything. So, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yes, those those kids, yeah, they know they learn so many songs from this year just because of the music and stuff. Cause, but it helps them learn. It helps them remember. Oh. So it's definitely helpful. Um, like um. Like, uh, talk about like your day. Like, what, what do you, what's like a typical class? Like, if I were to walk into your classroom, like, what will happen? Um, so I like to, um, I like to have a lot of, um, like kids' own projects hung up. Obviously, in the beginning of the year, uh, you know, um, the kids haven't made anything, but I like to include a lot of, um, you know, like nice sayings on the on the classroom I have a lot of decorations um let's see I always have um art supplies ready and you know available I have um let's see I have their their desks um how are they set up in the I put them in groups we changed uh assigned seats a lot throughout the year so well when you walk in it's like um, let me think. It's like a lot of decorations, I would say, yeah. And um, very kiddish because, of course, they're very young. So um, 
throughout the year, it would change through holidays. Um, and let's see. <laughs> yeah, so they'd have some silly things hung up. We also would, I would also keep the door decorated. So the outside of my doors always was always decorated with the kids project. So they would help me. They would even help me hang the things up on the doors um, in the classroom even too. So, you know, I wanted to make sure it was welcoming for them. So they each had their own cubbies um, with their names on it, their desks with their names. Um, and I also had pictures hanging up throughout the year. So pictures of, you know, us as a class hanging up through the year. And even with all those pictures and stuff, all the crafts, all of those things, um, I included in a in a little slideshow, PowerPoint slideshow for the parents at the end of the year. So I I got 20, um, how many kids are there? 20 thumb drives and I downloaded them onto each and gave it to the family at the end of the year. So they had pictures and oh, okay. everything they did. So oh, that was nice of you to do that. Yeah. 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 Um uh, tell me about um like uh, uh, any challenges you had like uh, any hardships that like you improved over time. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd say the hard like the hardest thing was probably probably disciplining the children, um, just because they're so young. Um, I have like a. I have patience with the kids that I don't have with adults. So I have a lot of patience with them. When it comes to adults, I don't have as much patience, but um, you know, it could be a good and a bad thing because the kids, you know, if you're too nice, they will definitely take advantage of you. Um, so that's like something I learned the hard way for sure, because I wanted, my problem was I wanted all the kids to be comfortable and to like me. So, <laughs> I didn't want anyone to say, oh, Miss Essence is so mean or, um, you know, I, you know, I'm scared or I, you know, I don't feel comfortable talking to her. I didn't want them to think that. So, you know, I just thought that being nice all the time was, you know, something you had to do. The thing with kindergartners is what I learned with is that um, even if you are disciplining them and you're talking to them, trying to teach them right from wrong, they will still love you the same way that they did before you were disciplining them. Um, you know, even if they end up not liking you or end up being mad at you, you know, it's something that if you're doing it the right way, if you're disciplining them the right way, as long as you're benefiting them, then, you know, they will come around and, you know, it's, a, you finish the end of the day knowing that you're, and you're, you end up helping that child anyway, whether they're mad at you or not. So I, you know, like I said, I learned that the hard way because towards the end of the year, I was like, as long as the kids do what they need to do, they know what they need to know and they're behaving the way they should be, then I did my job. So I, you know, I tried not to take everything so personally that they said or would do. That took, a, you know, it took, took a few months, but, um, you know, towards the end of the year, they didn't walk all over me anymore. <laughs> They didn't, you know, misbehave or shout out so much in class. So, you know, it's challenging for them too, because with COVID, you know, they, they're still learning how to act around each other. So, okay. you know, it's, it's, it was definitely tough. And, you know, even this year, we, I had a few, a few students out for COVID, you know, that got sick. So. It was tough. So do, do you wear a mask in class or no? So mask? towards the end of the year, no. But in the beginning of the year, we, uh, I wore my mask up all the way, probably I would say till the springtime. Okay. Um, but I would wear the mask if I, um, like if I was not feeling 100%, although if I was, if I was feeling sick, I would just not go. But you know, if they're, you know, if I noticed kids were sick, looking sick in the class or coughing, um, you know, I had them 
especially with the kids, I had the kids either put on their mask or mm -hmm. um, if it was that bad, I would give a phone call to home to mom or dad. And then, you know, they were checked out. So, um, yeah. And our school required masks basically all the way up till I want to say like late winter. Okay, masks were required um so some of the kids left there you know made their choice to continue to wear their mask during this school year so i had to that was you know another thing throughout the year i had to make sure that they all respected each other's choices so you know i didn't want a lot the last thing i wanted was one kid making fun of another kid for not wearing a mask or wearing a mask so yeah. Um, but I wore mine all the way up till springtime, I would say. Oh. And then I, then I, you know, they made it that it wasn't mandatory. So I wore it for a little longer and then I kind of got comfortable taking it off towards the end of school year. It's hard, mm -hmm. um, to teach. Yeah, um, yeah, honestly, it's hard to yeah, talk in the yeah. class. So during the school year, you know, when we had to keep our masks on, I did catch myself like taking my mask down so I could project my voice so they could hear me um and understand me but then I'm like I had to be, like remind myself okay I gotta put it back on because I can't have it off so you know it, and it's tough for them too because they same thing with them they tend to take their um mask off to talk or to to eat and then would forget to put it back on but I just remind them nicely that's all um and did you uh teach like uh like on Zoom or anything like during the COVID pandemic or no? No, I, actually I did I did not have to. Yeah, I did not have to do that. Luckily, um, since this is my this was my first year, so luckily we were all back in school at the time. Okay. Now we our school didn't have like any shutdowns or anything for COVID. Uh, if if a student um you know got sick with COVID or got sick in general they would just take the day off and um you know we would give them their work um that they would do at home but we, we wouldn't like um I never had to like host zoom meetings outside of class or anything for students for students that got sick okay that's good that's good to hear that yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, um how do you feel about like uh school shootings as a teacher um like everything that's been happening like in texas and um sandy mm -hmm. hook things like that um so i like it's hard because it is a very like a upsetting subject for sure but um so it's scary because, um, you know, we hear about the shootings that happen and they can happen anywhere at any time at any school. So it scares me because it, it, because it could happen anywhere. It make, it made me want to be even more protective of my class and of my students. So the more I hear about things like that happening, around the schools it makes me want to be more protective of them it makes me be more serious when it comes to drills and they, like knowing what to do in those situations I don't I don't outrightly like talk to my students you know very deeply about it but I do want them to be aware you know, of dangers. So I kind of talk to them in a way because they're so young. I talk to them in a way where, you know, it's a story or like the details are not as, you know, major. Yeah, yeah. I But I try to explain to them things, you know, dangerous things that could happen, they, you know, to watch out for their surroundings and, you know, know who to trust, you know, what adults you can trust, what, you know, people, you know, the people in your family you can trust, uh, the teachers in the school that you can trust. So uh, I just, you know, even though it's scary to talk about and I'm, I'm always worried about saying the wrong thing when I'm trying to explain to them, you know, mm -hmm. what goes on in the world. But 
I, even though it makes me nervous, I try to still kind of make them aware that they need to be careful. And like I said, it's as a teacher, it's my job to protect them. I, you know, I go all lengths to protect my students every time. So, you know, it's something that makes me be, be more vigilant about who's around the school too. Like, I don't, I don't want to see, you know, just strange activity going on in the school. If that, if I see that immediately, you know, I will go in, going to the higher ups and it's protecting my kids. That's my first thing. So, you know, I don't care what I have to do to protect them. If I need to get them out of the school, I'm sending them. The good thing was this, my kindergarten class this year, the classroom I was in, uh, we were on the first floor. So if anything were to happen, I'd just get them right out of the, the windows. Okay. So they, they could like, yeah, they were on the first floor. So, um, but I would remind them all the time what they need to do in a situation like that. Uh, we would dr practice drills, this whole school, you know, like every school we would have our drills. Um, but personally, um, it's, you know, it, it's so, it's heartbreaking because the lives, you know, that were taken, they can't, they're not coming back. You know, the kids right. Right. are not coming back. And, you know, it, it starts from, um, you know, it starts with the core. The reason why a lot of school shootings are happening a lot more often is because, the core problem of what this, you know, the, whoever the school shooter is, like they have their issues, they have, you know, whatever it is they're going on, that's going on, that's not, that's being ignored and it's being unsolved. And that person like is, you know, maliciously taking it out on young kids. And, you know, I, every situation might be different, but, you know, it's not, it obviously whatever trend is happening, whatever trend that keeps going on with whatever the school shooter's thinking or why they're doing that, it's, I don't know if it's being ignored or um, it's just no one knows why any, you know, no one tends to figure out why they keep targeting students, innocent students. And we need to figure out why is it, why are innocent students the target? Um, you know, nobody should be the target. There should be no target, but you know, we gotta figure out what's going on. You know, why are, what, what do those school shooters have in common that we can figure out, okay, what, what's the problem here? Um, you know, that's why also, um, psychology is very important go getting in deeper into these events the, the more these events occur the more important that psychology becomes because we need like we need to figure out what's going on why are these people doing this so you know we and we can't just keep lingering this otherwise unfortunately it's going to keep happening and you know I don't the last thing I want is for that to ever ever happen like in my, the hands of me because if if something ever happens to any one of my kids I like I don't know I would never be able to like forgive myself at all I couldn't so so yeah I you know I try to as my job as a teacher you know parents have their own role for you know, teaching their kids when to be careful, you know, who to be careful around, you know, and me as a teacher, I'm doing, I could do my job as well with that. So. Yeah, that's true. And um, do you feel like the federal government should do more? Mm, absolutely. Yes, I do feel that the federal government should do more. Um, there was a, uh, saying that or article saying that um you know with teachers being armed in schools now um it's it's a hard situation because I know every every teacher every person has their own like opinion on that and you know, our own preference um 
it's a hard it's it's hard because the guns the the you know weapons are what causes the or you know causes the the injuries and the deaths but you know really it's the it's the person that is you know doing the act of the shooting or the 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 um the harm so um I do feel federal government should absolutely they like I don't know I I honestly don't know what I couldn't I couldn't say what yet but you know obviously nothing's changing and it's only getting worse so um I want to say um I want to say sometimes access into schools is too easy these mm -hmm. days. Um, it's like I said, every school is probably different. The school I work at, thankfully, we have like a. It's the uh, getting access into the school. They make it. Uh, they make it pretty difficult, which is good. Um, but I've seen other schools. Um, you know that don't have as much protection getting into the school. Like, and that, you know, it doesn't mean just security. It means also, um, you know, who's picking up who, who, you know, who, if you're picking up a child, your, your kid from school, you know, who's picking them up, um, you know, doors being unlocked, um, visitors into the school, um, Honestly, I should, I also think, you know, people who are close to the school system, you know, should be trusted because um, you just never know these days. Unfortunately, it gets to the point where you need, like school systems need to be careful who they trust in the school and who they trust hiring into the school. It's like, it's to that point. Um, but yeah. I'd say it's too easy to get into schools, into the schools these days. Because, um, you know, how do I question, my biggest question is how do they even get into the school? You know, um, maybe through force, you know, maybe they can just walk in easily. I am not sure, but I have seen schools that, lack protection and I I could I'm a stranger I could walk into their school and I could be walking around and they wouldn't know um it's also to it's also important to be careful on school, school premises you know after school activities um you know I know a lot of you know school campuses are you know have their playgrounds and stuff open to the public which is you know I think is fine just be care being careful you know during and after school hours during the week weekdays is important. You know, kids might still be out doing activities. So it's important to, you know, make sure that we watch out for who walks or who walks on campus and, you know, what their intentions are, if they're doing anything weird or strange. So yeah. Okay. Um if you could say one thing, what would you say to uh, the federal government? Uh, if I could say one thing. <laughs> um, oh, God. I would say... Sorry, I'm just trying to think of one thing I would say because I feel like I'd want to say a lot of things, but... um. It's a hard question. No, you want to come back to it, or you? Yeah, let's come back to it. Okay. That. Um, where do you see yourself in five to ten years from now? In five to ten years from now, I would see myself. To be honest, I would still see myself still happily, um, doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, you know. I'm not guaranteed to continue 
teaching kindergarten, the kindergarten level, um, I do always want to stay in the elementary elementary level. So it's K through five, um, you know, so who knows if I'm moved to go and teach first or third grade or second grade. But um, in five to 10 years, I still see myself happily doing what I'm doing now. I know it's, um, I know a lot of teachers, you know, are having rough times and I could, you know, I could agree. I have rough times too with teaching just because of, um, you know, everything going on right now when in the world, um, that includes, you know, the, the, uh, violence, the, you know, the, the pandemic COVID, um, you know, affected a lot of the kids. Um, a lot of teachers, you know, are finding it difficult just to, you know, just to continue loving teaching. So, you know, I see that a lot where teachers fall out of love with teaching um, just because of the hardships, you know, and the um, the stuff going on today, which I, complete, I completely, completely understand because it's not, you know, teaching is not easy, you know, um, so, but because of that reason, because we're losing so many teachers, um, sadly, and a lot of schools, you know, are looking to hire teachers and, you know, the whole country is kind of lacking and, and losing teachers because of that reason, I, you know, want to continue what I'm doing because I know that, you know, the kids need me, um, and I know I can, pro, you know, be a good influence to them. So I don't want to, I want to stay strong for the students because they, you know, they need us. And um, because we're lacking teachers, it pushes me to continue doing what I'm doing because they just make, you know, it makes my role more important. And I, it makes me want to work even harder at my job. So, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any questions for me? Hmm. Well, what would you say to the federal government if you had to say one thing? <laughs> um, I'll probably say, yeah, you need to do more um background mm -hmm. checks, um, uh, mental health checks, uh, um, better gun laws like Japan. Um, like they're a highly developed nation, but uh, they're they're uh they're their shooting level is like really low compared to uh, other developed, na well, developed nations. So I'll probably learn from the Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that, that makes sense. I feel that, um, you know, not, you know, we need to look at other countries and we need to look at what, what's, what, you know, what is being done that is causing less violence. So, you know, obviously the the violence in this country is high because we're doing something wrong. The federal government is doing something wrong and it needs to be fixed. So, you know, it's never a bad thing to look at other countries and, you know, see what are they doing? What are their, you know, what are their gun laws like? What, you know, what controls do they have? Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, you know, we need to provide safety for everybody in the country, you know, especially, especially the young kids in school, you know, every, and I know shootings have been happening at other places like concerts and um, per, like the parade in the yeah. in Illinois, I know, in Chicago, I think that there was a, on 4th of July, there was the shooting, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hatred a lot in the country right now you know there's so many so there's so many different um like different views different standpoints um and i feel like people get way too hung like way too what's it called like way too into what they what their stands are what their um They get like, 
just way too tied into what their opinions are that they're forgetting that you know we're a country where we need to be you know we cannot be fighting within each other otherwise we're going to implode and you know all of that is happening because everyone has their own opinion which is fine everyone is obviously going to have their own opinion i don't think i think that uh, what the struggle in this country is that you know we don't know how to kind of handle each other's opinions i understand that like some people's opinions can be definitely hurtful to other people and it's not you know I could say that there's people don't always make the right choices including our federal government definitely don't make the right choices with a lot of things but um you know it's it's just a tough situation it really is you know I don't I don't know. I feel like it's so. It's this the situation has just gone so deep that there's, it's so deeply rooted, that, it's kind of hard to untie a lot of the stuff now and. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wow, that that was a good <laughs> interview, though. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was a good one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um... I know. I wish I, I could. I I like. I have so many like thoughts in my head that I could keep talking, but I don't want to like keep. I mean, you can. Um, it's just uh, <laughs> time's gonna run up unless uh, when I upgrade grade uh pro. I'm gonna do that later because I'm I'm busy. Like I'm in school and working. So. Yeah. 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 No problem. No problem. It was a good interview though. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It was a valid question. Um, I can have you back on here. Um. I plan on interviewing other people, um, asking on what they do and telling uh, different people's stories. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, oh, what's that Ecuador flag? Nice Ecuador. Yes, flag. that is the, my Ecuadorian flag. I also have um, my New York Giants oh. Odell Beckham jersey hung up oh, there. Yeah, I don't have nice. much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, same, I'm... same with me. We should go to a Giants game. Oh my god, that'd be fun! I know they suck, but like, yeah, I'm always gonna be a New York Giants fan because I was born, born in New York. So yeah, yeah, same, same. I was born in Staten Island. You? Yeah, I was born in Queens. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the Giants, they're my team. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>